Local Starbucks employees who are trying to unionize are receiving national attention from the man at the top of the coffee chain. CEO Kevin Johnson wrote an open letter to workers today. Three local stores are voting on the measure and the ballots will be counted later this week. Among other things, pro-union employees say they want more of a say on how the company operates. In it, he says, and we quote, we feel strongly that all partners in Buffalo should have a voice in the election. End quote. While we recognize this creates some level of uncertainty, we respect the process that is underway and, independent of any outcome in these elections, we will continue to stay true to our mission and values. The CEO's message comes on the same day that the company suffered a setback. The National Labor Relations Board ruled that the counting of mail-in ballots involving the three Buffalo area stores can move forward. Now, a former chairman of the NLRB sat down with News 4 Investigates to talk about this historic union campaign that the stores launched in August. Luke Moretti reports. Unfortunately, it has become all too typical. Wilma Liebman has been around organized labor for decades. She served on the National Labor Relations Board for 14 years under three different presidents and chaired the board under former President Barack Obama. She's been closely watching the Starbucks union campaign in the Buffalo area, especially the moves being made by the company. I can't quite figure out why they thought it was a good idea. Liebman is talking about the presence of higher ups in the company showing up at stores in the Buffalo area. I'm sure the workers think that they're being surveilled and having someone breathing down their necks all day long. When News 4 Investigates spoke to pro-union workers recently, most of them said they felt intimidated by the corporate presence in their stores. Just having the feeling of being watched like there's always a pair of eyes on you now is just it's chilling. Even the company's executive vice president, Ross Ann Williams, has been in the Buffalo area conducting listening sessions with employees and visiting stores. The swarming of higher up execs, I think uh, in a lot of stores has had the opposite effect they were planning on it having. Mm. It certainly pushed some fence sitters over into the yes category. Starbucks corporate has said that it's not anti-union and that the influx of higher ups in markets like Buffalo is not uncommon. But Wilma Liebman called the tactic, quote, unusual during an interview with News 4 I Investigates. Know, they, must, they must somehow believe that her presence there day in and day out will help to dilute the union support. Whether it'll succeed or not, we'll find out, obviously. But it, it is, to my way, of, to my knowledge, it's a quite unusual strategy. Pro-union Starbucks workers in the Buffalo area even filed labor charges against the coffee house giant, alleging interference with organizing efforts. The company denies the allegations, saying it has followed all laws and guidelines, and that it's not trying to intimidate or union bust. But Liebman, speaking generally, says the remedies for violating federal law concerning the rights of workers to organize are what she calls, quote, famously weak. So many companies just make a determination that it's in their business interest to fight the union, even if they are ultimately held to break the law because the remedies are so weak. We could know very soon whether workers at three Buffalo area stores join with Workers United Upstate, an affiliate of the Service Employees International Union. The voting period is winding down and the mail-in ballots are scheduled to be counted by the end of the week. In the meantime, workers at three additional Starbucks stores in the Buffalo area have filed for union elections. Starbucks is a very profitable company. Gary Barnadonna is with Workers United Upstate. We ask him about the union campaign in the Buffalo area catching on elsewhere. If it inspires others, that's a beautiful thing. And they, and they deserve to stand up for themselves and have a say in their work lives. And it's spreading outside of Western New York. Workers at a store in Mesa, Arizona are asking for a union election. Could this be a sign of renewed strength of organized labor across the nation? Certainly the, the evidence appears that a growing number of young people
have an interest in, in unions, have an interest in collective action as a way to improve working conditions, and have an interest in unions as a way to have a voice in the workplace. If the union campaign in the Buffalo area is successful, it would be a first for company-owned Starbucks locations in the United States. We'll keep you posted. Luke Moretti, News 4.